Hello, I am Michael Collins and this is Media Focus. In this video, we are going to be looking in particular at the upcoming game Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And we are going to be thinking in particular about the role of trailers when it comes to marketing games. Um, so we're going to be specifically looking at the uh, announcement teaser E3 trailer to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And we are going to be looking at how you can refer to this trailer in the exam, no matter what question comes up, especially if it's a question on industry, but also also, frankly, if it's a question on audience as well. Now, Assassin's Creed, so first of all, just a bit of context. Previously, in the previous exam specification, we as teachers were required to teach one game, and that was Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. Now, there are about a billion different Assassin's Creed games, and the exam board decided to pick a game which sucks, and to be quite honest, isn't actually very interesting or particularly relevant. So the new specification completely chucks that out the window. What we are studying is Assassin's Creed the franchise, the whole series, right? And you are allowed to refer to any of them in the exam. So in order to keep things simple, we're only going to be looking at a few of the games. So one of the games we are going to be looking at is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And this game is not out yet. And in fact, there's not even any proper gameplay trailers at this stage. This is because this game is not finished. It doesn't even have a definite release date at this stage. So all we know about it is the promotional material which Ubisoft, the uh, publisher and distributor of the game, is releasing. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla is what we call a tentpole or a triple A game. It is huge. It is expensive to make. And as we can see, just a quick Google here, it's also expensive to buy as well. So if you want to buy this game at the moment, if you want to pre-order it and then wait for it to come out, you're looking at paying at least £59.99p. Now, this is the RRP of this game. And as we can see, this is fairly significant, especially when, you know, any true gamer will have the knowledge that this game is going to decrease in price fairly rapidly. So at this stage, gamers do need to decide, audiences need to decide whether or not to jump in at day one in order to play it before anybody else can, or do you wait a little while in order for it to go down in price? Um, Players also have this option as well of buying the Ultimate Edition, which can be purchased for £99.99. £99. No idea what goes into the Ultimate Edition. Maybe you get a little figure or a t-shirt, or maybe you just get some special downloadable content. So there'll be something in there, hopefully to justify the additional £40. But I just chucked that in there just to kind of demonstrate that we are looking at a commercial industry. We are looking at an industry which makes its money off a core target audience. Now, in general, most people don't buy games when they first come out on day one, although a lot of people do. OK, and one of the ways in which a company like Ubisoft will attempt for audiences to go out and buy this at full retail price is they will use a pretty effective marketing campaign, as we are going to see in this video. So another thing to point out for this unit is that we only look at industry and audience. So industry is questions about how the product is made, what company published it, how many copies did it sell, how much money did it make? How does it use marketing material and stuff like that? Okay, lots of cold hard facts. And the audience is the group of people who buy and use media products. Okay, so if it's an audience question, it'll be how does how is the audience targeted? Uh, and how does the product appeal to its audiences? So something along those lines. What this does mean is that technically, we don't really need to look at media language or representation for this unit. So things like shot types, camera angles, cinematography, editing, that's kind of out the window for this one. Now, we do need to look at this a little bit because this is media studies and it wouldn't be media studies if we didn't talk about things like editing and cinematography. But we don't really need to point this out too, too much in the exam. The big focus is on an industry and audience. Likewise, representation, so how groups of people are shown. But again, 
it's no harm to point this out in the exam, especially if we can link it to the audience and the industry. So for example, if you can talk about how representations are used to target the target audience, well, that's just absolutely fantastic. And that's the kind of thing that you should be talking about. For this video, however, we are purely going to be looking at industry with a little bit of audience as well. So just to wet your whistle, uh, here are three possible questions that you could get in the exam. Now, these questions are all a little bit dry. Uh, I basically ripped them from the specification. And there are loads more questions that you could be asked in the exam. And if you're wondering, well, where do I get this? Where do I get all the questions that I could be asked in the exam? Well, just go on to the A-Level Media Studies blog at lr-media.blogspot.com and then check out the uh, revision guide tab. And there you can access the revision guide. You can download it in PDF format. Uh, and hopefully early next year, I'll also be printing out some copies of the new edition, which is absolutely brilliant. And I can't wait to distribute it. So here are three possible questions that you might get asked. How does this product attract and maintain audiences both locally and globally? How do marketing and promotion work, you know, factor into this? So as I said, the questions will be rephrased. Another question is how did the specific process of production, distribution, and circulation shape this media product? I.e., for example, with Assassin's Creed, how did the way it was made make it into the game that it is? Okay. How has digital convergence, i.e. digital technologies coming together, like streaming and YouTube and stuff like that, affected how this media product is distributed, produced, and also its circulation? Now, we can mix and max the, match these questions. We can combine them into one. That's all completely fine. But this just gives you a little taste of the kind of thing that you might be asked in the exam. Now, for all three of these questions, you can use the trailer to Assassin's Creed Valhalla to answer them. So looking at the first question, how does this product attract and maintain its audience? Well, it does it through the trailer to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So this attracts both local and global audiences, and we'll look into some specific reasons why. Uh, specific processes of production and distribution. Well, the trailer is part of production and distribution. So as we saw in the previous video, which was on the video game industry and how games are made, uh, trailers and promos are all an essential part of production and distribution. It will, it's an example of viral marketing and word of mouth, which will allow it, the product to target more audiences. How has digital convergence affected how the media product is distributed? Well, you can probably guess this. It's thanks to the trailer. The trailer is digitally distributed. I accessed it on YouTube and you're just about to watch it on YouTube right now, thanks to digital technologies. These questions might seem pretty fierce. They might seem pretty hard, but actually we can use exactly the same media product to answer all of them to an excellent level of detail. And I don't care what question comes up in the exam, you can talk about this trailer. Okay, so it's a really, really, really good idea to, you know, to start checking it out now. So another question that we might ask is how does this trailer target a specialized and a generalized audience? And that's really what we're going to be thinking about right now. And this is actually very, very similar to the last three questions, because each one of these is also talking about this idea of audience, about specialized and uh, uh, dedicated and niche audience. OK, so we need to consider how it is that this trailer can target different audiences, both a mass audience, by which I mean anybody, a huge audience, just anybody who's along for the ride, or a niche audience. People who are mad about games, people who have bought every other Assassin's Creed game and can't wait to get stuck into this. Right. So that's mass and niche, big and small. OK. And in order to consider this, we need to consider the media theorist, David Hesmanhull. And one thing that he said was that it is absolutely essential for industries to minimize risk and to maximize profit. So basically, this means that media industries work in such a way that they want to make as much money as possible while taking as few risks as possible. 
And I've just left in something from the last spec there, but how and why does a video game like Assassin's Creed need to target a mass audience? Well, hopefully we already know the answer to that. Why does a video game like Assassin's Creed need to target a mass audience? The reason for this is money. It's for profit. It's for power. If this game does not target a mass audience, then it is not going to be making a significant amount of money, which means that future games cannot be developed and the company who make it, Ubisoft, will go bust. But more importantly, we need to consider how it is that this product can and does market towards a mass audience, as well as a specialised niche audience. So that's quite a lot to take on board, but Actually, even if the question is tricky, the answer is always the same. It does so through its specific marketing campaign. So we are going to be looking at the Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer. This is for a game which is currently unreleased. It is coming out later this year. And if you're watching this video far into the future, by this year, I mean 2020. OK, so at the time of making this video, this video has not yet been released. And what I would like you to do right now is I want you to watch this very video. It's called Assassin's Creed Valhalla Official Trailer. It's on IGN's account. IGN are the Internet Gaming Network, and they are an absolutely huge online video game magazine. They're very, very mainstream, and a lot of publishers work directly with them in order to make announcements about video games. So all you need to do is search for Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer, and this is the one you want. It was published on April 30th, 2020. And right now, before you continue with this video, I want you to watch this trailer twice in a row. I don't want you to think about anything while you're watching it. I just want you to watch it, but I do want you to watch it twice in a row. So can you go away and can you do that now? Keep this tab open, open a new tab and watch the Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer twice in a row. Right, go, do it. Have you done it? Good, excellent. Right, let's move on. So. As I said, we don't need to think about things like shot types and camera angles and stuff like that. But what I want to do is I want to answer this question here. How does this trailer target a specialized and generalized audience? How does it target a mass audience and a niche audience as well? So a big audience and a small audience, right? So I'm going to draw out four specific things that this trailer does to target both of these audiences simultaneously. So the first thing that hopefully you noticed with this video is that it looked and sounded great. Now, obviously, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It might not look like your kind of thing. However, it very clearly has what we call high production values. This is not an independent video game. This is a big budget video game. And this is a big selling point to a mass market audience. Most people don't want to touch cheaply made indie video games. As much as it pains my heart to say this, this is very much the kind of stuff that I like to play. I'm not really a big fan of the Assassin's Creed series at all. However, I understand that I am in the minority. Assassin's Creed, however, has high production values. It has this very, very well produced, you know, score, this music. It has uh, a cast of thousands, these epic battle scenes as well. Other aspects that we can see within this trailer, which demonstrate high production values, includes the use of fur and hair. Now, this is something which is extremely hard to make. So every time you see a character with long flowing hair or a long flowing beard or some big furry cape, you know that the producers have gone into a significant amount of effort in order to make this. Now, one of the interesting things about this trailer is that it's not what we call gameplay footage. This isn't someone make it, play, playing the game. This is footage which has been specifically created for this trailer using computer generated graphics. Now all games have computer generated graphics. So what am I talking about? So this isn't actual gameplay footage, but instead this is what we call a, yeah, so this is CG. So this is what we call pre-rendered graphics. Obviously, it looks very nice. It actually looks better than the actual final game will be. 
And if you have a look at a little bit of text at the bottom there, it does seem to suggest that actually things might change a little bit between this. However, the point has been made. If you play Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you're going to see high production values. You're going to see and hear stuff that, you know, just wouldn't be possible in a cheaper game. And that's why you're paying your £60. Another thing which is really, really important about this game trailer, well, people who don't play video games who are watching this, you might have watched this and thought, well, this doesn't really look like a video game. In fact, actually, it looks like this trailer looks like a film trailer. And that's exactly another technique which Ubisoft use in order to target a mass audience. So, by using paradigmatic features of a film trailer, that is, the genre conventions of a film trailer, and this includes things like a voiceover, telling you the narrative, explaining exactly what is going on in uh, almost direct mode of address there. This also includes things like a range of different scenes, the hint of a wider uh, compelling narrative within the game itself, and absolutely no hint of having to push any buttons or anything like that. These are all examples of the paradigmatic features of a film trailer. And Video game trailers have done this for quite some time. And why do they do this? Well, because quite frankly, it works. Like if you're going to make a trailer for a video game, and if you want this video game to sell millions of copies, then publishers will use the techniques which they know will work. And this involves essentially copying the film industry. So this trailer has this build up. It has this soundtrack which builds up and builds up. It also uses this pop song, which is not actually probably going to be in the final game at all. and doesn't really fit into the Viking setting. But again, that's something that we expect to see on a film trailer. Now, even audiences who don't like video games, and to be quite honest, that's actually quite a few people, may well see this and they may well think, well, this actually looks pretty exciting. This actually looks like a film trailer. Maybe this is the kind of thing that I will enjoy. Maybe this is the kind of thing that I will check out. So this allows the trailer to target audiences in new and exciting ways. Another thing that this trailer has is that it has a clear story. It has a clear narrative. So at this stage, it seems kind of fairly basic because obviously it's not trying to give too, too much away. Um, however, we see this sense of a clear Todrovian narrative structure. We have the establishment of an equilibrium, of a time of peace. We also have a disruption of an equilibrium, this idea of an evil or perhaps misunderstood gang of Viking invaders who will invade Britain, and possibly even a restoration of the equilibrium. Like, who will win this battle? And obviously, it is completely up to the audience, playing the titular main character, playing the actual Vikings, playing the bad guys as well. That's quite exciting. Um, so this will provide to the mass audience, who might not be particularly interested in video games, this idea that this isn't just Pac-Man, this isn't just Space Invaders. There will actually be something exciting that they can hang on to in terms of narrative as well. And this is something which video game trailers very clearly have to do. They have to state that not only will there be exciting battles in this game, but there will be a clear idea of a story. Finally, this trailer also demonstrates what is known as intertextuality. Now, intertextuality is where one media product makes reference to another media product. Now, one of the game, one of the products that this quite clearly makes reference to is other Assassin's Creed games. It has the elements of the Assassin's Creed series. It has the high production values. It has the Assassin's Creed name. It has the battles. It has the stealth element. You know, it has the exciting historical setting. So people who have played Assassin's Creed games before can watch this. They can get excited by this. They can think, brilliant, that's me targeted. That's me done. I'm going to go and get that game. However, mass audiences as well can also take pleasure in the intertextual references to other films and TV shows. 
So what films and TV shows does this trailer remind you of? Well, okay, we're kind of stretching things a little bit, but if we watch like the huge epic fight scenes, it kind of reminds me quite a lot of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, which came out in the early 2000s. These extremely popular fantasy films uh, were seen by many, many people, including people who previously didn't even like fantasy films. And the Lord of the Rings trilogy really, really put fantasy on the map. And one of the ways in which it did it was it really, really focused on these exciting action scenes, which this trailer does as well. Another franchise that this does seem to make reference to is the Game of Thrones franchise. Through its gritty, dark setting, the iconography and mise-en-scene, it almost looks like the scenes which are beyond the wall, where Jon Snow goes out in order to I can't really quite remember what he was doing there, a uh, little quest, uh, but basically where it gets all snowy and stuff. So we could see this as being an intertextual reference to the Game of Thrones franchise as well, which not incidentally is an extremely popular series, which has a pre-existing fan base. So by making this game look a bit like Lord of the Rings and look a bit like Game of Thrones, this will indicate to a mainstream audience who might be on the fence that this will contain pleasurable references which they can get, uh, and this might lead people who generally don't play video games into playing this one. Because this is something which Ubisoft, the creators, will need to do. They will need to target both a niche audience, so people who will be playing the Assassin's Creed games already, maybe someone who's played all of them, although there's been like, as I said, a billion of them, well, probably more like 20. Um, but then they also need to target this mass audience as well. So anybody who might, you know, be interested in this, but perhaps don't play many video games. A lot of people buy a video game console, but might only buy two or three games. They might just buy, you know, an Assassin's Creed game, a copy of FIFA football, something like that. And this is exactly who this trailer is trying to target. So, if we just go back to Hesman Hull's quote there, uh, it's essential for industries to minimise risk and maximise profit. Now, how has this trailer minimised risk? Well, it's straightforward. It's minimised risk by making references to film, by making references to other Assassin's Creed games, and by including extremely high production values, which demonstrate to the target audience that this is going to be a big and exciting game. There is no hint of anything kind of strange or out of the ordinary. We know that we're going to get an absolute belter. It's going to be filled with loads and loads of action and excitement. Now, why is it that this game really is going to play by the rules? Why is it that this game is going to be straightforward? And if you're wondering, how do I know this is going to be a straightforward game? Well, let's just take a look at this. So in order to find this, I just googled Assassin's Creed front cover or something like that. Okay? Take a look at these images. What do you see? If your answer is, they all look the same, then yeah, you are absolutely right. Almost every Assassin's Creed game, in fact, every Assassin's Creed game, features a character their face partly covered, looking directly at the audience. They are surrounded by some wispy background, which is usually blue as well. They are holding some weapon, which functions as a prioritic code, indicating to the audience that there is going to be some action and some violence in there. The setting also indicates the game's USP, or unique selling point, and that is that each of these games are set in a historical time period. So, I can't remember, I mean, like Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation is set in the American South, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity is set in several different places. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla is set in Scandinavia and the north of England. So each of these games have a USP. They have a very specific, uh, what you call it, uh, way of targeting the audience. Assassin's Creed combines this stealth action collecting gameplay with a historical setting. It also combines science fiction as well, but 
interestingly, something which these trailers always skip out is this idea that these games are actually sci-fi. And I'm not going to go into this too much because if the trailer's not going to show it, then I'm definitely not going to go into this. Um, but we need to consider why it is the developer, why it is the publisher is like not talked about the other genre this game is because it is a hybrid genre. It combines a historical epic with science fiction. And one of the reasons is it's just confusing for the audience. If you're describing these games, it's like, oh, it's this virtual simulation. You're going back in time in order to solve crimes in order to change the future or something like that. No one's going to buy that. That sounds terrible. That sounds really, really confusing. So what the Assassin's Creed franchise does is that it focuses instead on how it can target a mainstream audience. So let's just flick back to some of these initial questions. How does this product attract and maintain its audience both locally and globally? Well, first of all, Ubisoft is such a large company that even despite being French, they aren't really targeting a local audience at all. This game is going for a global audience. Now, one happy thing about this game is that people who live in England and especially the north of England are going to see locations where potentially they even live rendered in this game, which is always exciting. However, how does it target a global audience? It uses universal themes such as violence, such as bloodshed and such as history, for example, the Vikings, in order to target them. How does the specific process of production, distribution, and circulation shape this media product? Well, there's a really, really quick and easy answer to this question. This game is extremely high budget, and therefore it needs to look and feel high budget. It cannot do anything strange. It must be as mainstream as possible. It must have as many big fights and big action scenes and gore and violence and epic music as possible. Okay, and it also must include as much content as possible. Finally, how da has digital convergence affected how this media product is distributed, produced, and its circulation? Um, well, basically, thanks to digital convergence, this trailer can be circulated online on YouTube, as you have just seen. So essentially, digital convergence allows it to target a larger audience um, in order to maximize its profit. So, that's quite a straightforward introduction, and the conclusion is basically, no matter what question comes up in the exam, you can always, always talk about the trailer to Assassin's Creed Valhalla.